Uh, let's go stateside because the NBA overnight have announced that all games have been cancelled. I'm delighted to say we've got Kavitha Davidson with us. Kavitha, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm still at the office. It's about 1 a.m. Uh, LA time. So this is a this is a story that, that, that matters. So Yeah, so like initially over the last week or so, there's been rumblings about the NBA putting games behind closed doors and everybody just thought, well, okay, that's that's probably what's likely to happen now, despite the fact even LeBron was like, oh, look, I don't want to play in front of uh, no fans. But now it's been a complete cessation of all NBA activities for an indefined period. We don't know how long this is going to go on. Yeah, it's this is really unprecedented. And honestly, everyone that we've talked to, we're doing our episode tomorrow morning about this, um, basically said that, you know, the conversation really quickly shifted from should we play behind closed doors? Should we not allow fans? Should we postpone the season just out of safety to now let's just suspend the season indefinitely? And having that patient zero in Rudy Gobert at the Utah Jazz is what just completely changed this conversation as rapidly as it did. Maybe just explain that for people who are only coming to this story right now. So the the... Where, was that the, the game was about to go ahead? Is that correct? Yeah, so this was a really bizarre scene. So the Utah Jazz were set to play the Oklahoma City Thunder in Oklahoma City, and the players had already taken the court. Uh, the starting five for each team was already was already on the court. And then you have referees running over and the medical director for the Thunder running over and, uh, you know, this very fast moving story. And then suddenly you see players are sent to the locker room and then uh, the PA announcer comes over in the stadium and tells fans basically to go home. He says, you know, on the advisement of the NBA and he he makes it a point to say we are all safe, which was interesting. Um, but, you know, very quickly we learned that Rudy Gobert, who plays for the Jazz, had not been in the arena because he had been listed as questionable earlier in the day with an illness um, and he had eventually tested positive for coronavirus. Okay and at that point that game goes how quickly afterwards is the decision made to cease all NBA, act NBA activities? Almost immediately, honestly. So um, I work at The Athletic, and The Athletic Shams Charania broke the story um, of Rudy Gobert testing positive. Five to six minutes later is when the NBA made their announcement that it was suspending its season. Okay. And it, look, I, I mean, again, we're all in uncharted territory here, but that seems like swift, decisive action. Uh, are they getting criticized? Has there been a backlash against that decision? Or are people going, look, right call, let's, let's ride this out and see what happens? I think that what you've seen in recent days, not just with the NBA, but, you know, the NCAA had decided today to close its door for the tournament to fans. You've had various other teams, um, either by the direction of their local government, um, close their door to fans. You've seen a lot of backlash in general from fans who think that this is an overreaction and who think that we're being alarmist or, or what have you. But I think at this point, you know, if if one player, and it can't be overstated, just the, the spider web, the network, the exponential potential for exposure for something like this and and because it's so uncharted we just don't know we don't know if this is an overreaction or not and it's kind of a better safe than sorry scenario but if you look at something like the jazz so this has trickle down implications almost immediately so the teams that the jazz played in the last 10 days have been asked to self quarantine for two weeks and that's about six or seven teams um and it's not only those teams right so the 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 jazz have played three teams the knicks the pistons and the celtics um, at their arenas, and they share those arenas with their hockey team. So, you know, let's say the Jazz played the Knicks at Madison Square Garden, and the next day, uh, you know, the Rangers played a game. The team that the Rangers played would have been used the same locker room that the Jazz used the day before playing the Knicks. So now the question is, what does the NHL do? Because now this is spreading more quickly than anybody could have anticipated. It's the security staff in the venues who are more likely going to transmit it than the actual changing room itself. So all of a sudden, it's like, you know, they whoever was welcoming Spike Lee to that uh, elevator. Who knows? Who knows where this story goes at this point? Um, but it certainly, it, it did seem um, from afar like the response had been quite slow at, uh, at government level. In particular, the, the, um, the Trump administration had been quite slow to kind of say this was a big deal. In the last 24 hours, that seems to have changed quite significantly. They've banned travel from the Schengen area of Europe, so that's mainland Europe, Ireland and um, the uh, Ireland and England okay. are actually okay. Uh, they're still going to be able to travel. Cargo is still going to be able to go. Um, but something like the NBA stopping activities is a giant wake-up call for everybody. 
It's absolutely a giant wake-up call. And like you said, you know, the, the administration on the federal level has been very slow moving uh, when it comes to this. But on the local level, you know, you saw uh, Santa Clara County in California ban mass gatherings of more than 1,000 people. That led, directly, that led directly to San Francisco doing the same. And that led directly to the Golden State Warriors saying that they would play without fans way before the NBA suspended its season. So that's just an example. You've seen this on a local level. The state of Ohio banned mass gatherings as well. So like uh, NHL games and NBA games that were set to play there uh, would not have been allowed to play. Um, but something like the NBA, this is definitely a galvanizing moment for, for the country and really for, for the entire sporting world. We kind of have to figure out uh, what is, what's worth keeping these games on. Yeah, and so the NCAA, that's March Madness, that is scheduled to go ahead behind closed doors. Is that tournament in New York? So that tournament happens around the country. The final four this year was set to happen in Atlanta, for example. Um, there are still regional tournaments going on, um, the ACC and the Big 12, for example. Um, the Ivy League had suspended its entire tournament, and a couple of other regional tournaments had done the same. As of now, the NCAA tournament as a whole is still set to go on in front of closed doors, as you said, with no fans. But this decision by the NBA is going to have effects on what the NHL does, what the NCAA does, and absolutely you know, we we haven't even started talking about baseball, but baseball season is starting um, in in less than two weeks, and and that decision is going to be need to be made as well. Okay, when whenever a suspension like this happens, everybody goes, oh, it'll come back in a couple of weeks. But this is an indefinite suspension by the NBA. Is there any scheduled uh, time? Is there even a suggestion about when they might begin to think about coming back on stream? You know, it's. There, there's really no clarity. This is very uncharted territory. And you can talk to players. If you talk to players today, they said, you know, we're waiting by the phone. We don't know if we should show up to practice tomorrow. What would we even be practicing for? Uh, nobody really knows when the, the plan to, to start uh, the season again would happen. And then this has trickle-down effects, not just on the regular season and then on the playoffs. And then if this gets ends up getting delayed, let's say a month or two, who knows what's going to happen with the Olympics? But then what are the effects of this going to be on Team USA's basketball? Basketball team, for example, if if the playoffs, if the NBA playoffs get pushed to a, a time that interferes with the Olympics, uh, you know, it's really it's really impossible to tell at this point. Okay, Kavitha, thanks a million for making the time for us this evening. I know you're really busy, but uh, great to have you with us again. Thanks. Thank you.